So since we spoke a week ago, the New York Yankees have found themselves in a position over 500. I'm Matt Levine. Welcome to my New York Yankees weekly report. This is report number four. As the Bronx Bombers are now 11 and 10 on the season, and we spoke a week ago, they were six and nine. So what happened? A big week for the Yankees in the Bronx. That's what happened. The Yankees took out their arch rival, the Red Sox, in a two-game series, getting the sweep. The first game. A laugher win for the Bronx Bombers. Second game, a come from behind W as Brett Gardner. There he is. Hit his 100th career home run at the right time. A grand slam. The Yanks were trailing at the time. 3-1 in the seventh. Gardy put him up for good. Also contributing nicely last week, another veteran, CC Sabathia, has made a couple starts for the Yankees. So far, a sparkling 10 innings. And he's picked up a win. Now, a Yankee I was concerned about last week. You were hoping, at least, I know there's a long way to go. I was hoping he wouldn't prove to be an early season bust. Some guys just don't make it in New York. We've seen it happen before. There was talk of him uh, seeing a sports psychiatrist or a shrink. Um, And he had struggled. And that's James Paxson. And how about Paxson? Whatever he's doing, keep it up, big guy, because... I am so impressed. He's been great for the Yankees. He evens his mark at 2-2 two and two now. Two great starts, a dozen strikeouts, becomes just a second Yankee to make back-to-back starts with 12 or more strikeouts. So he's been great. The Yankees will need to rely on him like J.A. Happ, who's making the first start right now in Anaheim. The Yankees in the middle of their first of their nine-game Western road trip against the Angels to kick it off in a dogfight. The Yankees have gotten contributions from all kinds of players, including uh, the trio I mentioned so far. But how about guys like Diego Herman? He's been fantastic. One of the uh, winners in the major leagues and wins, 3-1 and one so far. How about guys like Mike Talkman, who's come on of late. A waiver wire pickup a last-second addition to the opening day roster. Clint Frazier, disappointing spring after an injury-filled season last year, knocked him out with concussion problems and so on and so forth. He all banged up with an assortment of injuries. Well, he's come back after a buzzkill of a spring, and he's been called up from the minors, and he's been fantastic. Tied for the team lead in home runs, top five in the league in slugging, Everything you thought this blue chipper can be, he is right now. Love the kid's hustle. Love his attitude. Good to see. Another Yankee in the mix, a guy like Mike Ford, undrafted player from the Ivy Leagues, now an integral part of the Yankees' mix, especially with the latest injury. More on that in a moment. Gio Urshela has filled in nicely at third base. Human's work out of nowhere. And it goes on and on and on with the Yankees. So it's been a combination of the steady eddies, the veterans, the free agent pickups, and for lack of better term, terms, the no names. Now, the injuries have continued uh, to haunt the Yankees more so than any other team I've ever seen. I remember two years ago with the New York Giants. They had an uncanny rash of injuries to their wide receiving corps. Brandon Marshall, Odell, and was it someone else? Um, all they had like three receivers go down in a game, and they kept getting beaten up, and they had no receivers left. The Yankees, as a team, throughout that starting lineup, have just get, gotten decimated by the injuries. Unbelievable. And the latest one, last week I talked about Gary Sanchez, who, by the way, is expected to join the Yankees, rejoin him out west as early as this Wednesday. So that's good uh, good news. You get the slugger back. Now, Aaron Judge goes down this weekend with a severe oblique strain. The big guy seen right there. The RBI single against the Royals. And uh, that is a bad injury. They say... Best case scenario, maybe six weeks, up to eight. So it could be a couple months without number 99. 
Yanks get the two with three against the Royals and a two game sweep against the Red Sox to go four and one. They embark on this Western Road swing, as I mentioned, in Anaheim, the Big A. Looks like one of the cooler stadiums to go check out. I love waterfalls. I know the Royals have one in their outfield. The Angels, uh, look at that, have a spectacular waterfall deal at their ballpark. Makes me want to go see it. Now, there are about a dozen, a baker's dozen, if not more, uh, baseball parks on my bucket list to get to, and that is certainly one of them. The Yanks now uh, will play the four games in Anaheim, then go play some interleague baseball, three in San Fran and a couple in Arizona. Now, the Angels, Giants, and Diamondbacks, all subpar 500 teams. By the way, the Yankees enter tonight three and back of the Rays in the wing column for first place in the AL East. The surging Rays win tonight, so they're half game. Uh, they're three and a half now on the Yankees, and that is, again, to be determined out west. But I am impressed with what the Bronx Bombers have done. I'm going to ask you to please go ahead and subscribe to the station. Check out 954sports.com. I'm Matt Levine. Thank you so much for watching my weekly Yankee report. Enjoy the Bronx Bomber baseball this week, and we'll talk about it next week right here as I'll bring you my Yankees report number five.